Shalom, 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 and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, welcome everyone, everyone. Welcome to Agape Bible Study with your host, that's be me, Pastor K. Hey, I welcome each and every one of y'all. Hey, make sure that you, uh, as you're coming in, please make sure that you hit that share button. Share this uh, with your sphere of influence. Share this with your friends, followers. Come on, share this word because uh, we're getting ready to talk about and deal with something um, very, very important. And it's not not saying that everything uh, that we talk about and, and teach and preach here uh, at Harvest Temple Church of Restoration is not important, but we are in a season. We, we are in a dispensation, if you will. And I really want to deal uh, with this subject. I really want to deal with this topic on tonight, all right? All right, so here at HTC Restoration, uh, we strive to be a church for all people, ministering to meet the needs of all people right where they are through restoration in Christ Jesus. Hello, somebody. And here at HTC, yes sir, yes sir, clap it up, clap it up for our exclusive VIPs, that's right. Every guest that attends HTC Restoration, you are our VIPs. You are our exclusive, very important peeps, and we welcome you. Uh, and uh, listen, if this is your first time visiting with us, please make sure that you drop in the comments uh, and let us know. Uh, use the word VIP, all right? That'll be, uh, we're going to use that for right now coming i'm working on something uh we got some some things in the works uh on the tech side that we're working on and getting ready to implement uh we got some of it we're going to implement tonight but we're going to work on this one because i haven't really decided uh an, a nice catchphrase or uh, a term that i can use that's going to stick all right but i like vip i like that for right now so very important peeps if you will, please let us know in the comments if you are a first time visitor with us, uh, whether you're watching uh, by way of Facebook why, or if you're watching through the church website and you're watching through uh, our YouTube channel, please let us know um, so that we can get you a welcome packet. All right? We want to get you a visitor's welcome packet out to you. All right? So we welcome you to Agape Bible Service and Bible Study. Uh, here at Harvest Temple Church of Restoration. This is another one of our e-church services being brought to you by the Harvest Broadcast. All right, tonight, uh, if the Lord says the same, delays is coming. Preferably, I strive not to be before you long. Um, but we got a lot of information, got a lot, uh, of, of stuff that we need to dig into biblical, um, as well as, uh, what is going on and transpiring, um, uh, around us throughout the day. But tonight I want to look at, I want to talk about, and I want us to pay attention because there is a lost generation out there. Y'all, if you didn't know it uh now you know if you know it and you are helping the cause and you're praying and you're striving to fill the gap and stand in the gap and help this lost generation uh that is among us and those that are coming up behind the next generation and those on god bless you thank you keep doing what you're doing and i declare and decree uh, that God will supply everything and everybody that you need for the work and for the calling and for your assignment to this generation. All right. But we're going to deal with, I'm going to talk about and go through and break this down 
uh, how we got to where we are with this lost generation. And we're going to come from Judges chapter 2, uh, verses 6 through 12. Judges chapter 2, verses 6 through 12. Hey, right, so we're going to talk about the lost generation. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Agape Bible Study on today. Listen, uh, it has been well said that if we do not know the foundation on which the founding fathers laid for this nation, then we as a nation have no understanding of what we are to be. And better yet, who we are to be today. Thus, we are a nation that has no clear vision for tomorrow. And in the book of Judges, we read of a time in biblical history when the people of God received their portion of the promised land. Those people served God during the lifetime of Joshua. Now, if you kind of know anything of the Bible and you've been in Sunday school and uh, something of that nature, then you know that Moses delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of the hands of slavery and bondage, out of the hands of the Egyptians and Pharaoh. And so they wandered in the promise. They wandered around in the wilderness. They just basically walked around in a circle walking around the promised land that God had promised them uh, as an inheritance. They walked around mumbling, grumbling, griping, complaining. They were stubborn, stiff-necked people, as Moses called them. In our day and time, we would say they were just flat-out hard-headed and didn't want to listen. And so uh, that generation, with the exception of two, Joshua and Caleb, those were the only two who survived from that generation who went on to lead the next generation. And so in the book of Judges, uh, it, we are going to find out and we're going to talk about what transpired uh, during the time that Joshua and the elders are leading the people. But Judges uh, is a time in biblical history when the people of God received their portion of the promised land and those people served God during the lifetime of Joshua. Joshua was now the leader. Uh, God raised up Joshua as, as the new leader as Moses passed away uh, and transcended. Uh, then Joshua became the next leader. Uh, we have to make sure, I don't care what line of business, I don't care what uh, uh, ministry, uh, whatever the case may be. Leaders, let me say this, especially senior leaders, please make sure that you have a successor. It is very important that you are raising and training and, and, and equipping a successor. All right, because Joshua is now the leader. Moses, uh, he kind of he he basically had his hands uh, with grooming and helping Joshua to prepare to become the next leader of the children of Israel, and he was Joshua was Moses' successor, and. The people served God during the lifetime of Joshua, and they saw great things that the Lord had done. They saw some awesome, awesome things that the Lord had done. And so, sadly, after Joshua and the elders that were 
in his generation and the elders who were with him, uh, that whole generation of his time, they died. And another generation grew up, another generation rose and knew neither the Lord nor what the Lord had done in their history. Didn't know what the Lord had done to deliver and bring them out of bondage. They knew nothing of it. The generation after Joshua did evil in the eyes of the Lord and they served the gods of people around them. In other words, whatever, whoever the God was for the day, uh, that's who they served. If it was, uh, if it was a milk carton, guess what? They, they, uh, they worshiped the milk carton. If it was a rock, they worshiped and pray to the rock. If it was the sun God, the moon God, or whatever God that they that man had created in the people that they were inhabiting the land with, that is who they made their God. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors. They arose and they aroused the Lord's anger. According to Judges chapter two, you find that in verses 1 through 12, right? So, in saying all of this, there is a lack of understanding uh, of the biblical truths on which the founding fathers of this nation uh, laid this country's foundation. Turn my mic down just a little bit. So the founding fathers of this nation, they, they laid a foundation and this ignorance erodes the Christian values uh, the founding fathers had set for a course for the United States of America. Therefore, God's elect, God's chosen, God's people, Christians, Disciples of Christ, believers are to be prepared. You need to be ready and prepared to testify your belief that God raised this nation. God's hand is upon this nation and God has blessed this country and how he will deal with Americans depending on the choices we have made. What has brought me to do this lesson? What has gotten me to do this study? A few days ago, um, I was reading uh, about an incident um, that happened here in DC. And I think it was like March of last year or somewhere around there. But um, it just keeps coming coming up. It just I, I just keep seeing it on my feeds and whatnot um, about these two teenage kids who carjacked an uber driver in dc um and they carjacked him with a stun gun and in carjacking this uber driver uh he decides not to let his car get carjacked he's trying to hold on because he's uh trying to make ends meet he, he's trying to uh be a provider for his family uh, and his children and so they're trying to jack and steal his car and uh, he's fighting to keep the car. He's fighting to keep uh, and not let somebody just walk up and take something from him. And in the midst of this article, it says that, uh, that as they was uh, jacking the car, um, that they, one girl, she jumped in the driver's side, she hit the gas, the car starts to accelerate. It hopped the curve. Uh, as it hopped the curve, it flips. And the car ended up sitting sideways on top of the owner, crushing him. While the girls had uh, hopped out or somehow they were not injured. Um, and their own, and from the conversation and from the article I read about when one girl appeared in court. Um, all she was concerned about was the whereabouts of her cell phone. Um, not 
in a sense of I'm where I'm wondering where's my cell phone so that I can call 911. Uh, not in the sense of where's my cell phone so I can call for help. Uh, no, I just want to know where my cell phone's at. I need my cell phone. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's very valuable. That's very precious to me. My cell phone. I got, I got to have my cell phone. And so it has saddened my heart and made me think about just where we are and where we are going as a nation. And also how each generation is failing the next generation. So today and all this week, all last week, God had me, uh, had been dealing with me and he was dealing with me uh, in my daily devotion. And I dived back into Judges chapter two. And Looking at what is going on even in our world today, what is going on and happening even in society, what's happening outside your front door right now, I constantly realize that we have a generation that does not know Jehovah God. Let me give you an example. That was uh, about three months ago uh, at the CPAC the consecutive political action conference that was held down in Orlando, Florida, uh, the U S conservatives unveiled a golden statue of Donald Trump showing he remains a Republican force, even though he's no longer in the office of the presidency, but holds influential power and this statue and his his stat his status if you will is being worshiped by multitudes and when i saw this of course probably like you all right now that i'm that i'm sharing this with probably you've seen it probably you're going to go check it out and find out and look it up but once you see it probably you might have the same perception that i had uh and like many others i thought of the children of israel and the golden calf. When Moses went up to the mountain uh, and he took Joshua with him uh, to go and, and be in God's presence to obtain the Ten Commandments. While he was gone, Aaron was the predecessor. Aaron was the next in line and the next to be in charge while Moses was gone. And so Aaron uh, ended up being a people pleaser and Aaron was so concerned and uh, uh, so caught up in the people say so what do the people want uh, and he decided to give the people what they wanted the people wanted a God that they could see they wanted a God that they could touch they wanted a God that they could feel they wanted a God and so remembering where they came from they were still stuck in their mindset. They were still stuck in worshiping idol gods. And so they took all the gold, all the silver and everything that they had. God had blessed them to uh, leave Egypt with and they melted it down and formed this image of a golden calf. And they began to have all kinds of parties and all kinds of uh what oh man all kinds of stuff in honoring and in worshiping this golden calf and so when i saw this golden statue of donald trump and it made me think about the children of israel and the golden calf and i i saw the idolatry playing out on national television and see, we must understand that the Old Testament is not written just to fill up some space in the Bible. Oh, no. See, see, some people out there are ready to uh, shut down and, and talk about oh, that. That's the Old Testament. We in the New Testament. Well, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is hidden. 
within the Old Testament. So you need to read, understand, and you need to uh, study the Old Testament in order for you to really fully understand the revealing of the New Testament, which reveals what the Old Testament says. But we have to understand that the Old Testament is not just written to fill up. It ain't just, it wasn't just put it there to take up some space, but it instructs, it informs us of what to do as well as what not to do. For example, in Romans chapter 15 and verse four, it says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our, what, Pastor K, our learning. And so today I want to deal with this topic, the lost generation. Mm -hmm. I want to deal with this because it's easy to just look around us and to look even on television, to look around at work, uh, your school, uh, right outside your window, just everywhere and see people acting in a way that knows not, knows nothing about Jehovah God. But today, this day, this day that the Lord has made, let us take a closer look and see another aspect. All right? Our lesson comes from Judges chapter 2, verses 6 through 12, and I'm pulling this from God's Word translation. And Judges chapter 2, verses 6 through 12, it reads as follows. Verse 6 says, Now Joshua sent the people of Israel home. So each family went to take possession of the territory they had inherited. The people served the Lord throughout Joshua's lifetime and throughout the lifetime of the leaders who had outlived Joshua and who had seen all the spectacular works the Lord had done for Israel. Verse 8, the Lord's servant Joshua, son of Nun, died at the age of a hundred and ten years old. Verse 9, he was buried at Timotha Harris within the territory he had inherited. This was in the mountains of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. Verse 10, the whole generation had joined their ancestors in death, meaning that once Joshua transcended and he left earth and went back to heaven, he died, he passed on, the generation that was in his age group, if you will, was still around for a while, and then they died out. That whole generation had joined their ancestors in death. So another generation grew up after them. They had no personal experience with the Lord or with what he had done for Israel. Verses 11 and 12. The people of Israel did what the Lord considered evil. They began to serve other gods, the Baals. The Israelites abandoned the Lord God of their ancestors, the God who brought them out of Egypt. They followed the other gods of the people around them. They worshiped these gods and that made the Lord angry. That made the Lord angry. So we're talking about the lost generation. So if I may, let me lay the foundation here that a generation is a time or age that identifies the people of any particular period. It denotes the character of a specific class or sort, such as a wicked generation or a righteous generation, 
a generation has two fundamental characteristics to it. The first one is this. It usually covers a 20 to 30 year span, right? And this is when most people get married and have children, which begins what, Pastor K? The next generation. Secondly, the second fundamental characteristic is this, that members of a generation experience significant events about the same time, meaning that things happen during their generation, things happen uh, for those uh, of this generation and those of us who are part of this generation going on now, we uh, have experienced the significant event of a global pandemic. Now, for example, uh, you have the traditionalists. Uh, the traditionalists are, are my parents. Uh, they are the parents that are born between the years of 1900 to 1945. These people are the oldest living generation and they are rapidly declining every minute. As you see, the traditionalist generation, this generation, they went through, they saw, they experienced World War II, the Korean War, the end of women's rights movement, the Red Scar, and they lived in the radio age. In addition, they and their parents had just survived the Great Depression, which left a lasting impact on this generation as well. This generation was raised in the traditional nuclear family, a married man and woman and their children. At this time, uh, labor unions began to develop. Work was necessary and not meant to be fun. Then after the traditionalist generation, uh, once they had children, their, that group or that generation is known and became the baby boomers. This generation was born in a massive flux between 1946 and 1964. Why are they called the baby boomers, Pastor K? I was wondering the exact same thing. And I did some research and I found out they're called the baby boomers because Almost exactly nine months after World War II ended, the cry of the baby was heard across the land. As far as home life goes, the traditional family began to fall apart due to divorce rates skyrocketing. If two parents were involved, mothers stayed home while fathers were the breadwinners because children were seen as special and needed to be raised with care. As the baby boomers came about, the development of suburban life increased substantially. The baby boomers went through a quick time, real fast time in America. They lived through the civil rights movement. They lived through the Vietnam War the Cold War with Russia, and the start of the space age and space travel. Yes, Space Jam. Hello, somebody. The baby boomers are also known as the me generation, M-E, me, the me generation, and are seen as greedy, ambitious, materialistic for being taught the American dream as children and trying to follow it as they grew up. Being the children of people who went into serious political disagreeable wars, this generation, the baby boomers, grew into peace-loving, anti-war hippies in the 70s and 80s. Hello, somebody. Their core values include anti-government, the belief that anything is possible, equal rights and opportunities, personal gratification and growth, optimism, the idea of being involved and making a difference, teamwork, 
makes the dream work and they follow the belief system of spin now worry later along with questioning everything the baby boomers they like to work the they are considered workaholics seeing as they put 60 hours and more into work per week they invented the 50 hour work week baby boomers are driven and work to develop their self-worth and identity and put in quality work now after the baby boomers have gotten married the baby boomers start to uh repopulate the 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 earth and 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 they are starting to have children their children that they have are known as generation x this is my generation generation x gen x or gen xers were born between the years of 1965 and 1980 known as the post boomers generation x were born to the baby boomers because their parents were such serious workaholics generation x learned to balance their personal life and their work life better they also learned to take care of themselves early on for their parents weren't necessarily there to do it for them generation x was the first generation to be daycare children since mothers were also expected to work outside of the home with high divorce rates families had grown steadily away from the normal nuclear family and many single parents started to run the household this generation we watched america lose its power and standing globally as their pol as their politicians turned to lies and trickery the economy began to turn for the worse and the generation x parents were often laid off generation x we lived through the watergate scandal the energy crisis the moon landing corporate downsizing and the end of the cold war mr gobachev that wall must come down this generation became known to potentially uh not do as financially well as our parents did very cautious with our money generation xers handle their work life and finances responsibly we have a motto that we go by which is we work smarter not harder education was looked at as a way to get there which is very accurate because at this point education grew more critical than it ever was before a high school diploma became like gold in the working world because of their un their upbringing and uh latchkey children yeah we was we were latchkey kids you don't know what that is that means you had a key uh latched on to you because uh mama daddy or daddy or mama or grandma uh wasn't there they was gone to work when you got home from school so you had to let yourself in get yourself together sit down begin your homework do what you need to do hello somebody i know there's some latchkey kids out there there's some latchkey kids even in this generation hello somebody where did they get that from they got it because you are a generation xer hello so because of their upbringing as latchkey children generation xers are very self-reliant yes we are very self-reliant that being the case we often question authority and like like the baby boomers we enjoy working but we hope for a casual work atmosphere we wish for a more meaningful line of work have no issue with moving from job to job generation xers we like to get in get quality work done and then get out 
They don't have any desire to stick around and smell the roses. What do you mean by that, Pastor K? We ain't trying to work a job sun up, sun down. We ain't trying to work a job uh, 50, 60 hours uh, and, and 20, 30 plus years and trying to retire from it and, and get a little, uh, little pension pay. That's what I'm talking about. We don't have the desire to stick around and smell the roses. We don't care too much for work advancement, but we do care more for life navigation. And so the Generation X, my generation, we have had children, we have children, uh, and as we've had as we've had those children, that generation is now known or is known as the millennials. Yes, the millennials. I have a millennial. The famously hated millennials are those who are born between 1981 and 2000. There are many nicknames for this genre. They are Generation Y. They are the Millennials, Generation Next, uh, Eco Boomers, Chief Friendship Officers, and 24-7 Chief Friendship Officers. Huh? Well, that's because of how much we desire equality and how forced they are to be politically correct 24-7. Uh-huh. See, the millennials, they want to be politically correct 24-7, sun up, sun down. They never sleep. Technology keeps every one of this generation up. When some of them finally sleep, the rest wake up to texting on their cell phones, checking the local uh, social media status. Families of millennials are merged with others, mixed families, blended families, and often led by single parents or better yet, grandparents. Their major worldly influence includes events like 9-11, terrorism, digital media, school shootings, growing up as children of divorced parents. They have experienced and seen the AIDS epidemic, gay marriage legalization, police violence, Black Lives Matter, TV talk shows, and so much more. The world seems to be getting busier and busier with various issues. They grow up sheltered and overprotected, for their parents often wanted to do uh anything they could to protect them from the cruelties of this world. Mm -hmm. We protected those millennials from the real world. We, uh, we sheltered them. The millennials are ambitious. They have big dreams, but are often unfocused and need guidance. They're stuck to their gadgets and reliant on their parents. Sounds familiar? Anybody got some millennials that are stuck to their gadgets and totally depending on the parents? They depending on the parent to get them, to buy them any and everything. The Bible says you spoil the child. You spare the rod, you spoil the child. What? Are you saying by that, Pastor K, if you ain't disciplining them, telling them, no, you don't need this little Johnny right now. No, you're not old enough for this. No, you don't need this just because everybody else got it. No, no, but you, you don't want to hear him cry. No, you don't want to spank his butt because he sit there telling you he going to call CPS. He going to call Child Protective Service. He going to call this. Thing. Listen. Hello, somebody. Generation X, we got whooped. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but let me refresh your memory. Extension cords, shoes, belts, whatever mama, daddy could find to, to, to correct your behavior when it was wrong, 
Oh, I got a better one for you. Your neighbor had, they had the same authority that if they saw you doing something that was a bad reflection of who you are and whose you are, uh, they had your parent. I know my mama did. I don't know about you, but my mom and my daddy said, Hey, listen, if you see him doing something, showing off and he ain't got no business to do spank his butt. Yeah. I got a butt whooping from a neighbor turned around after I got the butt whooping from the neighbor thought I was in the clear, but no, uh, -uh. the neighbor picks up the hello. The telephone makes a phone call, tells my mom and daddy what I did. By the time I got home, got another butt whooping. Hello, somebody. But listen, it didn't make me abusive. It didn't make me a wife beater. It didn't make me uh, uh, angry and, and, and all of this that we see nowadays for the lack of discipline. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I, I, got, I got to keep going. I got a lot, so I, I got to keep going. This, this, the, 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 the millennial generation, they're stuck to their gadgets and they're reliant, depending on their parents. And we have had superior education, which now is viewed as a requirement to succeed in life. Then the millennials, they have children. And then there's the next generation that comes about after the millennials. And that generation is generation Z. These are children who are born after 2000. And not enough is known about generation Z at the moment, except that they are very, very similar to the millennials so far. What are you saying, Pastor K? That generation Z also is stuck on their gadgets and reliant on their parents. They are sitting there waiting for their parent to kick the bucket so that they can get the house, waiting for the parent to kick the bucket so uh, they feel like that they are entitled to any and everything, but don't want to put in the work and the process and don't want to uh, do what it takes to get and acquire things of their own so that they can better appreciate and have a attitude of gratitude. Rather, they got an attitude. Y'all don't hear me. Generation Z. That's the generation that is born after 2000 So let us let's get into let's get into our lesson Judges chapter 2 uh verses 6 through 12 but I want you HTC for for your devotion this week for your study uh please make sure that you go and you check out read study uh and examine Judges chapter 2 uh, go verses, just, just go the whole chapter, all right? Just go the whole chapter, uh, chapter two of Judges. Uh, and as you will see, and as you will read in Judges chapter two and verses eight through 15, uh, when I was reading that, it reminded me that abandonment of belief in the church is only just one generation away. You see, the church's future will test how well we are doing to maintain the spiritual stability of our young people today. Let me say that again. The future of the church will be tested how well we are doing to maintain the spiritual stability of our young people today. That's generation Z, Z, generation Y. Hello, somebody. How well are we maintaining the spiritual stability? How well are we making known to them who Jehovah God is? And the question becomes, how could it happen so quickly in Israel that a new generation did not know the Lord Jehovah God? You see, God built safeguards into the home to keep this from happening. Uh, 
back in that time. In Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four through nine, it says, hear o, hear, o Israel, the Lord our God is one God. God warned them against forgetting him, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And I like this because this, I had to highlight this. Listen, he goes on to say, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou lie down and when thou rise up. You should be telling them who God is. You should be instructing them and discipline them according to the word. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to spank my child. I don't want, okay. That's what it means when he says, spare the rod. The rod is the, is, is the correction. When you, re, when you deny correction to the child, then you're going to spoil the child and they're going to feel like they can show off anywhere, everywhere, and whenever they want to. And then they're going to show you up and show out on you. Y'all don't hear me. And it goes on and says, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon their hand and thy shall, uh, and they shall be as uh, frontlets between thy eyes and thou shalt write them upon the post and th of thy house and on thy gates. Meaning in and everywhere you go, you are being exposed to the word of God. You are being exposed to who God is. You're being exposed to how much he loves you. You're being exposed to, uh, he's trying to tell you, don't go down that path. That's the wrong way for there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. He's saying, listen, I have prepared a place. I have prepared a path. I know the future that I have for you. You just need to go down this way. You need to do it like this. But you see, as long as Joshua lived, idolatry was kept in check. The weight of his influence was a buffer to Israel for many years. The impact was carried on among Joshua's contemporaries. The elders of that generation carried on and they made sure that the idolatry was kept in check. But Israel lacked the independent strength to be faithful to God after Joshua's generation has died out. Now, we must ask, do we have the independent power to remain faithful to God without the living influence of these individuals? The generational drift into apostasy or desertion was such that it consisted of forsaking God for idols and it involved the worship of other gods, sexual immorality, and the total lack of knowledge of who God is. We must stop and examine ourselves. The Bible says, let a man examine himself. We need to stop and examine ourselves today. We need to be asking, are we the generation that does not know the Lord? Are we the generation that knows about the Lord, but does not hold the mighty works of Jesus as central and precious in our own lives? Was it the past generation that knew the Lord and stood in faith, but now we don't do the same? Hello, somebody. We must be concerned for ourselves, honestly evaluating whether we know the Lord or whether we only know about him. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you have a relationship with Jehovah God through his son, Jesus Christ? Are you being led, uh, encouraged? Are you being uh, enlightened by the Holy Spirit? When you're ready to go left, 
you hear that small steel voice say no stop go right do we know the lord or do we only know about him see having a relationship with the lord god through jesus christ and knowing about the lord are not the same things oh yeah i know god yeah, I know of God, of God. You, you don't know about God. You just know of God. Well, who is he? Oh, you know, he, you know, some people say, you know, it, 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 thank you, Holy Spirit. It's, it's just like when Jesus went to the disciples and says, who do men say that? I am? Who does the world, what is society saying about me? Oh, man, let me tell you. They say you this, that, and the other. They say you this person and that person. He said, all right, now I got the world's view. Y'all been y'all been hanging with me. Y'all been rolling with me since day one. Uh, so let me ask you this. Who do you say that I am? Oh, man. I, don't, I, I just thought you was a carpenter's son, man. Uh, you know, um. You just want the you just want the homeboys, man. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, you know, God, the Holy Spirit revealed it to Peter. Peter was the spokesperson of the disciples. Peter said, "Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God." He said, "Well done, Peter." He said, "But guess what? Your brain didn't conjure that up. Your brain didn't 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 get that." He said, "He said, good job, Peter." He said. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father who is in heaven has made that known. And he says, and upon this revelation, upon you getting this revelation, this knowledge, he says, I will build my church upon this revelation that I am the Christ, the son of the living God. I, and upon this rock, I will build my church, meaning you and me, the believers, the saints, I will build my church upon this revelation and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Why? Because we ain't on defense. See, as Christians, we need to be on our offensive attack. See, he ain't give us no, he ain't, he ain't give us nothing to cover us up on the backside in a sense. You look at the whole armor of God, he said, put on the helmet, take the shield, put on the breastplate. The shield is to uh, withstand the fiery darts. But if you running and got your back running, then he going to pop a couple of them darts up in you. Uh, come on now. So having a relationship with the Lord and knowing about the Lord, they are not the same. They are totally, completely Two different things. To know him is to love him. And to love him is to obey him. First John chapter 2 verse 4 through 6 reads like this. It says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, you a liar. Don't take it up with me. That's the scripture. That's the word of God. <laughs> the Bible says, First John chapter 2 verse 6 he that says, if you walking around here saying that I know God, I love God, you don't love God, what's wrong with you? But you ain't keeping his commandments and obeying him. I tell you what's wrong with you. You a liar. And the truth is not in you. But whosoever keeps his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby, now we that we are in him no know, know that we are in him therefore he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walks in other words you should be striving to be christ like not knowing just knowing about a lot of people know know about me a lot of people know 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 me but there's a few who really know who i am there's a few who really know me hello somebody and see to know him is to be in a relationship with him galatians chapter 4 verse 6 it reads 
And because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through who? Christ Jesus. Will our knowing the Lord ensure the same for the next generation? We cannot know for sure. Every individual of every age has a choice to make. Life is choice driven and the choices are long lasting and life changing. Joshua 24 verse 15, it says, and if it is, if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, HTC, generations that are listening to me right now, everyone that is watching and listening, choose you this day who you will serve, whether it be the God of your fathers on the other side of the flood, meaning those Egyptian gods and, and, and all those other lowercase g gods that man-made gods and, and you done brought them over onto this side and, and, and you still worshiping and idolizing any and everything other than Jehovah God choose you this day who you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the amorites in whose land you dwell in right now for you see as far as pastor k lady z and the dunn household as far as htc goes as far as our house, we will serve the Lord. Hello, somebody. Let us examine this a little. What does it mean that the next generation did not know the Lord? We know it doesn't mean that they were completely unaware of God. Not that they did not know the Lord. They didn't. They did know who God was. They, they eventually heard the name Jehovah. They eventually heard the name and heard some of the stories of Jehovah Jireh and how he provided manna, provided bread in the wilderness, how he provided a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of smoke by day. They heard of these things. They did know who God was. However, the saving acts of the Lord were not central or precious to this generation. The mighty acts of God and his truths were dear to that of the previous generation, but this new generation, this new and current generation didn't appreciate what God had done. Sure, they may have gone through the motions. Oh my God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Sure, they may have gone through the motions. Sure, they may sing on the praise team. Uh, sure, they, could, they can shout and speak in something that they think might be speaking in tongues, but it wasn't indeed down on the inside. Hello, somebody. According to Judges chapter two and verse seven, who had seen all the great works that the Lord had done for Israel, all the generations that witnessed and experienced the great works of the Lord, they had died. But those things were not precious and central to the next generation that arose. They did not honor nor rejoice in what God had done before and lost the meaning and the significance of what God was doing for them now. This is what is happening even in our society right now. Remember, I started about the young people that asked, that, that stole the Uber car. I talked about that. I know 
but yet they don't know. I understand how Jesus suffered and died and rose again so I could and you could have eternal life. But yet this generation, these generations that are coming up can't appreciate it because they don't know who he is. Verse 11 reveals what happens when people don't know the Lord. The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. If you didn't know by now, I'm here to tell you, the generation of now is wicked. It is a wicked generation and it is getting even wickeder. If that is such a word, that's a Pastor K word. But the generations are getting wicked and more wicked. If I can try to carjack somebody's car with a stun gun, the car flips over. I have no compassion for humanity. I have no sympathy for the human being that is in pain with a car sitting on top of them. And all I'm, cons all I'm concerned and worrying about is where in the world is my cell phone so I can take a selfie? Where is my cell phone so I can put this on social media so I can Snapchat this? If that's all I'm concerned about, yes, you are operating in the wicked generation. You are operating in a world of wickedness. What happens when people don't know the Lord? The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And when you do not make the Lord central to your life, you are going to do evil. The Lord is the only, let me say this again, the only governor that keeps us from giving ourselves to wickedness. The Lord is the only governor that can keep you from giving yourself over to wickedness. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ today, you are going to find yourself operating in wickedness. Unless we know the Lord personally and develop our relationship with him, we will move into a life of evil. L-I-V-E-E-I-E-V-I-L. Live evil. Evil live. Hello, somebody. Understand this. If people do not worship God, then they are going to worship something. If they ain't worshiping God, they're going to worship something. Why are you saying that, Pastor K? Why do you say this? It's because of this. Because we are created to worship. God created humanity to worship. This is why if you're struggling with the color of my skin, if you if you're struggling uh, with who I am, if you're struggling with all of that, you're going to have a problem when you get to heaven because you can't worship now. You can't honor and respect God's creation. He created all people of all race, color, religion. He created us all. Humanity was created in his image and in his likeness. If you got a problem with that, you got a problem with yourself. Not only with yourself, but you have a problem with God. I ain't scared to tell you. But I'm telling you because I love you with the love of the Lord. God loves you. We were created to worship. So many times we as church folks have noticed that the preached word is the essential part of the church service. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all churches, I am here to challenge you and to challenge your mindset today and say no, no, the preached word is not the essential part of the church service. The essential part of the church service is worship. Worship. 
We preach because of sin. But before man sinned, he was created, good God Almighty, to what? What? Worship. Hey, you didn't know that? Hey, you better get in that Bible. I want to challenge our mindsets today and to realize that the preached word is not the essential part of the church service. The essential part is the worship service because we preach because of sin. And if there's no sin, then we don't need to preach and tell you that there is that, that you are operating and living a sinful lifestyle that you are operating in sin in disobedience. But if we are obedient as Adam was when he was created, he was created and he, worship God for the Bible tells us in Genesis that when God came down and he would walk and talk with Adam in the cool of the day, that creation could not decipher who was Adam and who was God. It just bowed. It just worshiped. Hey, good God almighty. If Adam never sinned, there would have been no need for preaching, but worship, was there then worship always be so if we don't worship god we are going to find ourselves worshiping some you may be worshiping that nine to five you may be worshiping that career you may be worshiping them six figures you may be worshiping whatever you're driving whatever's in your closet you may be worshiping whoever it is you laid up next to whatever the case may be listen if you ain't worshiping god you're going to worship something and when you find yourself worshiping something else other than God, this, my friend, is adultery. You are idolizing. And God says that you will have no other God before me because I'm a jealous God. Idolatry today is not so much the bowing down to statues, but it is the functional gods that provide our identity and security. When we allow idols into our hearts, our hearts become captured by these idols and our desire for the Lord slowly becomes snuffed or choked out. Have you ever known someone? Or better yet, maybe has this or is this happening even to you? Someone used to have a great zeal for the Lord. They used to be on fire for God, but now they come to worship and their eyes show that they don't care anymore. They just simply come to church, come to come to service, uh, come to Bible study, uh, come to where the saints are gathered. They just come to just go through the motions. And sadly, idols have captured their hearts, resulting in the love for God being choked out. Jesus told a parable about the soil where the thorny ground swallows up the seed and chokes out the plant. Idolatry chokes out love. Put that in your notes tonight. Idolatry chokes out love. When our hearts abandon God and turn to idolatry, it sets us on a path to misery and distress. According to Judges chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, God allowed Israel to suffer the consequences for their sins. When we become Steeped in idolatry, we are given over to the desires, bringing devastating consequences eternally and here on this earth. Sin does not make a better life, but only causes problems and more suffering. What is happening today in this generation often rejects the ways of the older generation. I'm going to let that set in. I, I, I'm, I think I might just close the book right here. I, I might just end this. 
What is happening today is this generation often rejects the ways of the older generation. They will not listen to what they have to say and will not follow the paths of walking in the ways of the Lord. The methods of the previous generation are considered boring and old fashioned because they are only going through the motion. If that they forgot or come to the end of not even knowing the Lord. Watch this. Sin is a downward spiral that drives one deeper and deeper into the abyss until finally the heart grows more corrupt. This is the scariest part of the descent into sin and wickedness. Then finally there is no point where the mercy and grace of God no longer moves the heart and the people become corrupt with idolatry. Let me in, let me just put a pin right there. I'm going to put a pin right there. And, and, and next week I'm going to come back and pick this back up next week. We'll come back and I'm going to talk about the marks of the generation that knows not God. Let me put a pin. My time, my time is up, but let me park right here. Let me go back and say this again. What is happening today What is happening today, what is happening in society as I speak is that this generation rejects the ways of the older generation. They don't want to listen. They don't want to follow the path. And it's not because of what we're saying. Oh, y'all don't hear me. It's not because of what we say. is not right, but it is the fact that what we say that we contradict what we do. We don't do what we say. And so the generation rejects our wisdom. They reject our knowledge about the Lord God. Why? Because they don't see us. They don't see us doing. So if I, if I needed to, I want to put a subtitle to this. I know we're talking about the lost generation, but let me put a subtitle to it for you. Just based upon what I just said, how the generation doesn't want to listen to the older generation because the older generation is saying a lot but we ain't doing a lot because actions speak louder than words. I'm going to stop right there. We'll pick this back up next week. Next week, we're going to talk about and deal with the marks of a generation that knows not God. Listen, if you, you like to join HTC Restoration, listen, it's on the screen. Uh, text the word homebound to the number 77411. Most gracious heavenly father, Lord, I, today, I, I, I just want to pray. And father, today I want to stand in the gap for our next generations. Father, I pray that the truth 
that has been entrusted to us is not only talked about, but it is seen in our lifestyle. And the lessons that we have learned will not be hidden from the next generation. Father, would you grant us every grace we need to make known to our children and even the children yet unborn, the path that leads to life? Make us, help us as As we are a generation of parents, a generation of educators, pastors, resource developers, publishers, writers, translators, supporters, and partners, make us a generation who will teach them your ways, who will not only just teach them, but they will see us as living epistles, as we walk out as we live what we say that our actions will speak louder than our words make us a generation who will teach your ways and how to walk according to the truth so that the next generations coming might set their hope and confidence in you and not forget your works. Give to our children and to their children souls that are anchored in heaven. Sustain them in a deep and substantial assurance of things hoped for like Abel and Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Moses, Gideon, and Samson, David, and Samuel, and all the prophets, and all the saints. May our children live as sojourners who desire you and all that you have promised. May our children live as sojourners and desire you, Lord God, more than they want money, more than they want sex, more than the power that they seek, more than the popularity they feel they should have, more than anything. Hey, my God. Let them have a spirit, have a desire to want you, Lord God, more than anything whoever is watching right now i declare and decree that you will have a thirst and a desire as the deer pants for the water that you have a thirst and a desire to want to know and to be in the presence of god more than anything god give us the faith to be strong. Give us the confidence when we are weak. Give us faith to be married and to trust when we're single. Give us belief to have children and trust in you when we are childless. Lord God, help us to lay aside. Help this generation. Help everyone that is watching this broadcast right now. Help us to lay aside every burden and the sin which so easily entangles so that we can run the race that you have set before us, holding fast to hope and holding firm to the confidence until the day when your kingdom comes in all its glory and truth once and for all trumps over sin death and mourning and tears all that hinders the everlasting joy 
that is ours through your son, Christ Jesus. It is in his name we declare and send this request signed, sealed, and delivered in the matchless and mighty name of your son, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray. And all God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. It is giving time here for each to see. Shell, if you will, all right? But come on, God loves a cheerful giver. Are you cheerful today, or do you just want to be happy, or do you have joy unspeakable down on the inside? Come on. and organ. Commercial break. Shalom. Welcome to Keeping the Faith Podcast with your host, Pastor K. Hey, I created this show for faith partners just like you, seeking inspirational and motivational encouragement to help you maintain your faith during difficult times. Did you know that life is choice driven and those choices are both long lasting? and life-changing? If you want to hear more of this podcast, make the choice, subscribe, and tune in to Keeping the Faith Podcast. And remember this, faith is expectancy. So what are you expecting from God? Yep, that's right. That's Keeping the Faith Podcast with your host, me, myself, Pastor K. That's right. And if you are looking for a podcast, not just to tickle your ears, not just something to just 
uh, pass the time away. But if you're looking for a podcast that will inspire, motivate, and encourage you to keep the faith during these most difficult times that we're in, I suggest, I highly recommend that you need to tune in. You need to subscribe, follow, and check out Keeping the Faith podcast. All the information is here on the screen. Uh, we are available on the following listening platforms, uh, anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, CastBox, and also on Overcast. All right. So I want to send a big shout out, big thank you to all of those new subscribers that we have. Uh, we are almost at the 200 listening mark and we are approaching our one year. Yes, the podcast is just creeping up on one year uh, of being uh, established and we almost at over or right at 200 uh, subscribed listeners. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you to all my uh, faith partner supporters. Um, Thank you for your monthly contributions. Thank you for what you are doing in helping us. Uh, and listen, if you want to, you also can be a faith partner supporter and uh, you can help uh, with a monthly donation that, that helps along with my other uh, faith partners. Uh, it helps to update equipment, sustain future episodes, but most importantly, those donations we uh, are partnering together to conduct community outreach projects. Now, if that is you, you want to do this, you can one of two ways. You can just go to the website that's listed right there under podcast website. It says anchor.fm forward slash harvest dash broadcast. Go to that, click the support button. You can begin making your monthly donation and contribution that way. Or if you got cash out, just go to Cash App and the cash tag is dollar sign keeping the faith. That's dollar sign K E E P I N T H A F the number eight, the letters T H. That's dollar sign keeping the faith if you want to make that contribution through Cash App. Once again, thank you to all my listeners. Thank you for all my listening platforms. Thank you for my listening audience. Uh, each and every one of you all right here in the United States. To all of you all, a big thank you for those listening in Germany, Costa Rica, South Korea, and Ireland, and as well in Russia. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Love you with the love of the Lord. God bless each and every one of you all like never before. All right. So if you haven't done so, I also am an author. I'm a published author as well. Uh, not only am I a husband, father, friend, mentor, uh, all those wonderful things, I'm also uh, senior lead pastor. I'm also uh, uh, published author, podcaster. Yeah, I'm having fun. I'm, I'm enjoying life. And I'm going to be enjoying life to the fullest. Hey, hello, somebody. Listen, if you haven't done so, please make sure go to Amazon.com. Get your copy of my my latest book. That is published in ebook and in paperback, and that's Faith or Fear, which is your partner. And then you can also pre order your ebook for the upcoming book that will be coming out the end of August entitled Opposition Releases Opportunity. All right? Just go to that website right there, Amazon.com forward slash author forward slash Kelvin Dunn and get your copy. Father's Day is Sunday. Come on, get your copy and bless that awesome man of God. Go ahead and bless. 
bless that man. There's some man who needs to tap into faith or fear and know which one they need to be partnering with. All right? Do that. Yeah, I know, I know. My time with you all is up for Agape Bible Study. Uh, but I thank each and every one of you all for your time tonight. I thank you for hanging out, hanging with me uh, tonight. Thank you for joining our e-church service here at Harvest Temple Church of Restoration. This service, this e-church service has been brought to you by the Harvest Broadcast, which is a production of Harvest Temple Church which is also being brought to you by the Ministries of Harvest Temple Ministries, which is the Ministries of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration. I got that all backwards, but it's okay. Listen, also, uh, those of you all that are watching us by way of our YouTube channel, please make sure that you hit that like button. Make sure you leave a comment but most of all please make sure that you subscribe peeps turn on the notification bell so that you will be informed and notified of all the upcoming e-church services that we are having here at htc restoration also check us out if you have any questions comments concerns please feel free check us out on the world wide web at www.christrestored.com O -R -G, and you can also email us at Harvest Temple Ministries at gmail.com. I also, you can find us on other social media platforms like Instagram at HTC Restoration. You can find, follow, and like us on Facebook at HTC Restoration. All right. So in the meantime, in between time, till the next time we meet again, if the Lord says the same and delays his return, I will see you all uh, for the Sabbath day, Saturday e-church service right here on the Harvest Broadcast. Uh, and on behalf of the awesome, wonderful, lovely, Lady Z and myself, Pastor K, and the entire HTC Restoration family and peeps. I say Shalom Baraka. Peace and blessings be upon each and every one of you all. And may the Lord watch between you and me while we're absent one from another, but never ever are we ever absent from the presence of the Lord. For the eyes of the Lord, his focus is always. Looking down is always upon us. His eyes are always watching and looking at the good as well as the evil. Once again, I say Shalom, Baraka, peace and blessings be with and upon each and every one of you all until we meet again for Sabbath service e church right here on the Harvest Broadcast. Till then, I'm out.